Sweet Dreams is back, man. It's time for the king to come back, reclaim his throne, and uh, remind y'all, because y'all seem to have forgot. I seem to have forgot what happens when I come in there and these things get to work. Well, 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 sweet dreams nation. What a weekend. Had an amazing card this weekend with UFC 298. Got a new flyweight champion crowned in Ilya Tapurie. An amazing knockout over the greatest champion that the division has seen to date in Alexander Volkanovsky. Um, got some new challengers motion in the uh, in the divisions moving from this card. You know, we're going to talk about it. You know, I was there live and seen it. And uh, as you, a lot of you know, there was a, uh, also a big announcement this weekend as to my return and uh, what's next for what what to expect from the headline of the great UFC 300 card. As uh, you've all been anticipated, so we're going to talk about some of those things and uh, we're going to talk about the card. For the most part, it was a solid card, good prelims, a lot of a lot of finishes early. Well, a few. A few finishes early. Yeah, shout out to Zhang Mi Yang on the knockout. Uh, shout out to him. I've got to know him out at the PI while he's been here uh, getting ready for his fight here. And uh, also his coach actually did some pad work with me to help me uh, stay warmed up and uh, get some work in. So I definitely appreciate that. Um, going over the fights that we actually went over on, on War Council, the Diego Lima and Junior Tafa, which we originally broke down, Justin Tafa, his brother, I believe he had an injury or, or visa issues, or whatever was happening. And his uh, his brother stepped in on short notice in order to take the fight in his stead. And uh, we got a pretty good fight. We got a pretty good fight. Um, Diego came out. Delima, my bad. I don't know why I keep saying Diego. Delima came out with uh with the leg kicks. The leg kicks were good early. Tafa looked like he stepped in on short notice on a day's notice on twenty four hours. Um, Lima had him hurt early with the leg kicks, and for some reason he decided that when he saw him limping and hobbling on one leg, that he shot for a takedown to take him down. Now, this is something that just drives me completely insane, especially at this level. Like, a lot of guys have the fight IQ of a P. Like, this was not, this was the one of the, it was about as low IQ of a move as you, as you can possibly get. A guy is standing in front of you, first round, early on, you hurt him with leg kicks, you've got him up on one leg, hobbling, and you shoot for a takedown and lay on him for the rest of the round. Made absolutely no sense. At least he went in the corner and they explained it to him in the um in the corner and then he came out and was able to put it together and and get the finish from that. But whoo boy, it was it was it was it was tough to watch the rest of that first round after we after you already see a finish clearly in front of you and somebody to do that. But uh he got the win, so shout out to him. Amanda Lemos versus Mackenzie Dern. Oh, it was a good fight. Really, really good fight. A lot of action. Um, again, a very um a fight that could have ended a lot sooner. You know, um, one thing I'm gonna do, I'm I'm definitely gonna pat myself on the back for this because if you go back and you watch the War Council breakdowns for these fights and the things that I said that each fighter needs to do and where I said the advantages were. For the people that uh in these fights, I was spot on, like with almost everything. Um, the difference in the fight in, between McKenzie and Lemos was the footwork. McK McK uh, Lemos has better footwork. She has better footwork. She has a little better range on her uh on her punches whenever she throws, and she has more more strikes in her bag than Mackenzie. Mackenzie was able to get her down, which I I said she needed to do, be able to get her down. 
But she didn't do anything. She just kind of laid on her, held her position. You know, she didn't really go for any submissions. She didn't really land any damage on her or anything like that. And um, I believe the first round, Lemos won with with the leg kicks. I believe the judges probably gave it to her off of that because even though McKenzie was able to get it down, she didn't do any damage. And the big thing was you could see that those leg kicks were doing damage on McKenzie. Her leg was swollen, and um, she actually she actually stumbled her. Round two, um, Lemos dropped her. You know, she had her hurt really, really bad and dropped her and decided to lay on top of her. Once again, I don't understand this thing where somebody people, where you have somebody hurt, where the last thing, if you were in that situation, the last thing you would want to do would be strike with somebody and you let them off the hook. Again, a low IQ move, not, not something that you would expect from somebody at this level fighting in the top 10 of the world to be making mistakes like this, you know, um, but again, she did her thing. She got the job done. She got the win. It was a split decision, which it almost could have cost her, you know, and there were some people in the crowd who felt Mackenzie Dern had won that fight. I wasn't one of them, but, you know, that's what happens when you leave it up to the judges. A lot of times it gets left up to the judges based off of decisions people make in these fights. So moving on to the main card. Fluffy Hernandez versus Roman Kopulov. Really, really good fight. It was a really, really good fight. Another one I called. You know, um, I knew Fluffy was very gamed on the feet, and I knew he still he had a really good uh, ground game and, and the ability to submit, which we called with him submitting. Uh, I forget what the guy's name was. He was like one of the top jujitsu guys, highly decorated. And uh, Fluffy was able to rock him and submit him. And this fight, um, I think the the durability of Hernandez played a huge factor in this fight. Um, cause Roman came out firing, dude. He hit him with some with some hard body kicks like uh that he likes to throw. He's really good on the inside, landing some shots, so he landed some good shots. And I think as um as the fight went on, the durability of Hernandez kinda kinda uh kinda shined through and Helped him help him get through to the victory as he started landing shots on him, kind of pushing Roman back. And then he started grabbing him, putting uh, working on him from uh, from the clinch, got him down to the ground, was able to get on his back and sink in and choke, which Roman was defending the choke really good at first. And then he kind of made a, a decision to take a roll and rolled and kind of sunk it in a little bit more. But shout out to Fluffy Hernandez getting it done. Good shit, bro. Marab Duralish Willie versus Henry Cejudo. Dominant performance by Marab. Complete domination by Marab from start to finish. Marab's gas tank is incredible. I don't know, like, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody uh, be able to keep that type of pace and have that 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 type of gas tank um, as you as the fight goes on. You see it every fight. Like, these dudes literally fade right before our eyes in these fights with Marab. It's just like, it's not like, um, and Marab is there to be hit. He, he like, his timing, like, like, uh, like Henry said, I believe in the thing, like, um, he said Marab can be predictable. And what Marab wants to do isn't like, like, He's not the most tricky with the things that he does, but what he does, he's really good at, and he's got good timing, and he's good at getting to those things. And he does them at a super high pace. So if you try, as you try to defend, and you try to work that pace, and you try not to get outworked, you realize that there's no way to out, there's no way to keep up with the work that this dude is putting out. And you see him start start to fade. Henry saw the uh, saw some of the shots and saw some counters there. I believe his arms just got tired and he just got too tired to capitalize on them. And Marab just rolled downhill from there. It was it was incredible. You know what I mean? I think this is the best version we've seen of Marab from in terms of come stepping in and landing shots and landing big threatening shots that could end the fight and then to where whenever he needed to switch and get to the takedown against an Olympic wrestler was able to actually toss him and get him down you know um this speaks volumes to his skill level volumes to where he is and um with this 
a thousand percent he desire he deserves a title shot next there shouldn't be anything else next before Marab Duvaj Willie but a title shot you know um since the my I've been out in Vegas in my time um since I've been recovering from injury and I've spent I've spent time with Marab you know he had a barbecue at his house I attended you know and I've got to uh be with him and check out a lot of some of Georgian culture um Ilya personally asked me to come out to the fight you know um I went out to support him of course I'm a fan I'm a fan of Volk too and I'm cool with the team over there at City Kickboxing but uh the, these Georgian guys are just they're incredible you know um Marab, uh, Ilya, uh, Roman, even though Roman came up short, like just as, as people, these guys and their culture is just, um, is really humbling. You know, I've, I've never seen them sit and just trash talk anybody, anything. They kind of just kind of speak straight, speak how it is and speak how they feel. And, um, it's just like, it's, it's kind of refreshing and not, not see like any snake shit really in the, in the, in the, uh, within that culture and within that group and within those guys, you know, and that's the only representation I've I've had of Georgia is those guys and they represent it very, very well. Um, shout out to Marab on that and uh, definitely title shot next. Jeff Neal versus Ian Gary. Um the fight the fight to me wasn't as bad as a lot of people uh think it think it was or think think it was to be it was a, it was certainly i was expecting a little bit more action a little bit more exchanges a little bit more um you know fist clashing and and uh knuckle busting in there but you know it is what it is if you if you if you watch the war council i kind of i kind of called called what what um I broke it down. I feel like I, I feel like I really per, kind of broke it down perfectly. I said, um, Ian, Ian would would be the longer fighter. He has really good patience. He's not gonna really let Jeff walk him into a trap or lull him in to to the type of fight that he wants to do. Jeff wants to get on the inside. He wants to box and let his combinations flow. And um, Ian's not gonna let you do that. He's gonna stay on the outside. And I thought that the length of Ian pause. You know what I mean? With his reach and shit like that. And then the kicks. You know, kick Ian kicks fast. He's got really, really good fast uh twitch muscles to get to get that leg up there and uh and land some effective kicks, the kicks to the body. You know, he worked a lot of the things like that Shopcott had a success with against Jeff. Ian just kinda implemented some of those things to a certain to a certain degree. And uh I believe it gave it gave Jeff gave Jeff a little bit of problems. And um, Ian was able to ultimately get the get the victory. Shout out to him, bro. Shout out to him, y'all. Um, people can hate. He got a lot of hate. I don't think I have ever, ever, ever heard anybody booed so loudly. Like his post, uh, if you were there live, you couldn't hear a word that he said on the mic because of how deafening the boos were. From Ian Gary, um, I believe Jeff is from somewhere over here on the West Coast in this area, so he had a little bit of a hold. But it was it was it was just unreal. People do have completely turned um, a sour stomach to to Ian Gary, and it's it's crazy to see the kid's extremely talented. He's still young. He's still trying to find his way. I don't think this is something that's going to seal his fate. I think he'll have a great career and, and with that and with the wins and with him steady progressing and doing his thing, the, uh, the perspective and things will change. But um, he, he stays undefeated on this day and he did, he did, he did enough to win. Oh, shout out to him. The co-main event, Rob Whitaker versus Paula Costa, it was a banger. It was a banger. I think this is um, the the Paula Costa that we that we were used to seeing back before the Izzy fight, and now and him kind of had gone through whatever he's gone through in the time since then. Um, he returned to form, and he looked he looked he looked really good. He he came forward. He had he had good strikes. He had good hands. He had good uh, good movement. I think Rob was just a little bit better at controlling the distance. And just like I said in War Council, he was the footwork, the footwork, and the movement of Robert Whitaker was was the difference ultimately. I believe and. Um, yeah, I believe the fight actually could have went either way. I believe it was a really close fight. The damage that Paula Costa that Paula Costa was able to do to Rob Whitaker that he wore on his face, I believe probably should have 
accounted for maybe just a little bit more in the judge's eyes as it could have. But um, I'm not gonna say that 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 Rob that it was a robbery and Rob didn't do enough to win because um, Rob was mixing it up. He was he was land he landed good shots on Paula Costa as well. Um, I believe a lot of people are giving a lot of that to it because early on Paula Costa was able to catch Rob and actually rock him whenever he hit him with that with that crazy ass spinning wheel kick and uh, rock him and a lot of people thought that was going to be it but Rob stayed composed he was able to bring it back together I believe he did do enough to win the third and the fourth uh, the uh, the second and the third round and yeah there you have it but uh, it was it was it was a really it was a really really good fight though really really good fight um, I'm excited to see what what the uh, next challenge is for these for for both of them. As many of y'all as many of y'all know, I've invited I've invited Paula Costa to come up to 205. I'm always open to for new challenges. I think Paula Costa has the has the um the build for for a, a good 205 fighter, but you know for whatever reason he wants to keep playing around down in middleweight. But you know whatever, whenever you're ready, if ever. Shout out to you on the on the dub, Rob. The main event: Ilya Tapuria versus Alexander Volkanovsky. Um, it kind of went how it kind of went. I didn't. I'm not gonna say it went how it went because I didn't. Because like I knew this was a very good possibility that it could end this way. Um, Ilya is is very very good he's very good everywhere and he's very dangerous when he gets on the inside his boxing and his combinations inside and in the pocket are second to none absolutely second to none um i thought volk would would kind of put a little bit would, would be aware of that a little bit more and be a um be a little bit more on the on the leg attacking the leg i think i thought volk should have attacked the the lead leg of Taporia a little bit more to kind of slow him down and kind of uh stop some of that forward pressure maybe beat up his leg a little bit and then you can uh you can start to get on time and volk did a did everything right did not every i'm not gonna say everything because ultimately obviously he lost so there's some other things that could that could that could be adjusted but as far as his movement his angles and where he was they were bad. They weren't. I mean, they weren't bad. They were in good spots. Um, his, the angles that he had on Ilya were 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 pretty good. He was able to walk him into some spots. Thing is, Ilya stayed calm. He stayed composed, and he stayed forward and pushing him back. And the one thing I will say about that was bad about Volk whenever they were exchanging, he did a lot of. He was a lot of here. He was on the back foot a lot. He ended up on the back foot a lot, and I, uh, ultimately Ilya was able to find a way to put him on the back foot where he was still in range, and then be able to get it, get off his combo while he was on the back foot. And Volk, I believe, tried to throw a counter to interrupt, and he he missed, and he paid the price for that. Now I will say this: the exact same combination that Ilya Taporia knocked knocked Alexander Volkanovsky out with, he showed me this exact same combo a week before in the, at the PI. Um, I seen, you know, um, like I said, I've I've gotten in good uh, with the with the Jordan guys. We spent we spent some time together. They they're they're an amazing bunch of guys. Um, also, before I before I forget, I don't I don't I don't want to forget this Ilya. I need that wine. Georgian wine. I don't know if anybody's ever had Georgian wine. It's incredible. All right. There's a Georgian red wine. I really like it. I had it at Marab's house. Ilya told me he's going to have two bottles for me, but you know, he was busy he had presses and everything like that. After the fights and whatnot, I had a fight. You you know how it goes after the fight. We weren't, we weren't able to link up for the party. I mean, my bad for that and everything like that. But I still want my wine. I still want the wine. Get it to me. Two bottles. You said two bottles. I need two bottles, Ilya. You know, I ain't got the rose and everything, but I on the rose. I need that. But um, yeah, like I was saying though, he hit me with the same combo. In the in the lobby of the PI, we just messing around like little things. You know how you know how fighters do. You you mess and you joke around. Um, moved right in close in the pocket and he threw. He threw, he threw a jab, tap, tap the jab, caught the first hook. He literally threw two hooks. Bang, caught the first one, threw the second one, and caught and like he actually hit me. Yeah. He actually hit me. It was so fast. The boy was sharp, bro. He was sharp. And um 
I'm really, really good at catching punch, especially in the pocket. For so for me to not see that and him to do that the way he does, and he's short too. You know, I'm long, pause, but yeah, bro. Um, yeah, bro. I, I knew he was capable of of doing something great, and uh, it was good to see. It was good to see him do that and accomplish that. You know, I, I had my moment becoming the champion, so I know I know the feeling, and um. Bro, I'm happy for you, brother. All right, now, so shortly after the main event in, uh, ended, there was a big announcement. We finally got the answer for who will be headlining UFC 300. And it will be yours truly versus Alex Pereira. And the reaction to this has been kind of a mix of things here and there and whatnot. And this... um. A lot of it's been a lot of outrage, a lot of disappointment, and things like that. And I'm to like to be honest, it's crazy to me because for the most part, like people, uh, these are a lot of these people are the same people that spent the better part of I don't know year, however long, trying to call calling me a crybaby. But it's crazy to see how a card can be stacked. The main card literally has a former champion or champion in every single fight, and some even facing former champions. In every single fight of the main card, each one of the prelims is worthy of being its own separate main event. And people are crying. Like, 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 let's really, let's really be real. It's really, really crying because you had unreal expectations for something. Now, granted, I think Dana will, may have, well, did, he did overstep with some of the comments that he made, but he had every intention on delivering on those, on those comments. As, as you know, Anybody who's followed the UFC for some time, whenever Dana tries to tell you he's trying to deliver something, he wouldn't talk like that if he wasn't trying to deliver like something that you that that you people would feel is mind blowing or, or other or otherworldly. But instead, you got one of the most technical, guaranteed banger of a fights that you could ask for at this time with serious imp implications and one of the historically one of the best weight divisions in the UFC. And um, people are comp complaining, bro. You know, I think I see one comment. It's funny, though. I think I see one comment that said I was expecting Connor versus Jesus himself. <laughs> at this point now, I'm convinced that wouldn't have been enough. Like y'all could have got Mario versus King Kong, y'all could have got uh got uh Wolverine versus uh Iron Man. You could have gotten anything. Hulk versus Superman, uh Spider Man versus Batman. You could have got any of this, and you wouldn't have been. You wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been happy. You know. So. All I can say as far as as far as the as far as the the whole all oh, the disappointment and it, it not being worthy of of this spot and things like that is that's crazy. Like whenever you whenever you pay for a fight, do you not want somebody who's coming to 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 take somebody's head off, to knock somebody out? That has a that has very 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 high level skills, and the capability of doing so. You got that on both ends in this fight. I put it on the line every time. Every single fight, go and watch any fight. I'm coming forward. I'm putting it all on the line. I'm taking risk, and I'm giving everything to for the show. You know. And uh, for the disrespect to flood in the way that it is about a fight that a, a lot of people have asked for, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep it a thousand. I was there. I did the fan experience um, in in Anaheim. That's all people were asking. That's all people wanted. It, true, like a lot of a lot of fans, a lot of true true fans. That's that's what they wanted. They wanted this for 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 UFC 300. 
like what fight what fight do you really think would suffice? I think I seen somebody say like Cain Velasquez. Um what was the other one? Like Ryan around like like people who haven't fought in forever coming off of the couch who couldn't possibly give you as high of a level of a show that me and Alex could. And it's like, bro, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? I believe UFC 100 was Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir. People, it was it was a it was a complaint that oh Brock Lesnar's just a show. He's a WWE fighter. It's just a it's just a name. We want we y'all wanted a hardcore, highly skilled, highly competitive fight. UFC 200. Who was supposed to headline that? It ended up being Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate. But who was supposed to headline that? I can't exactly remember who it was, but we got Ronda Rousey versus uh versus versus Misha Tate, which I believe was that the like the second fight? Was it the first or the second? Misha Tate and Amanda. Misha Tate and Amanda. Okay. Now on par with those, the I would. I would say me and Alex is and not I mean just just being just being honest I say me and Alex are ne are are leaps and bounds in terms of show skill and everything else that you get with those fights in terms of in terms of that so um as far as that goes you know people going to say whatever they want to say I already know I already know how my fights are and how my fights affect people whenever I step in that cage Y'all will be watching. It will be entertaining, and it's going to be action. You already know how I'm coming every single fight, and it's must-see TV. Same with Alex Pereira. We both have, have put it on the line. We've shown y'all who we are through blood, sweat, and tears. And um, I have true belief that the true fans, which I believe that 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 pool runs very, very deep in the uh, in the community, they will lock in, and they know, they, know, they know exactly what they're getting in this fight, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, man. As far as but like um I'm shocked, bro. I'm shocked. I'm not going I'm I'm I don't, I don't know how I'm not going to fake fake y'all, bullshit y'all or no shit like that. Like the the I I got a call Friday. Right? Friday saying, "Hey, I need to talk to you. This is the situation." All right, situation was we we want we would love for, we want you and Alex to headline UFC 300. All right. They offer me a bag too. You know, I'm not like like you want, you know, we know you're recovering from this. We 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 have this option, we have this option, we have this option and we prefer it to be you guys because we want it to be headlined by a title fight. So whatever other options they had weren't title fights. They were just some big name fights that they, I guess that they were that they were working with that they um that they had ready to go. So they did have other fights. With. This is what this is the fight that they ultimately decided to go with. And um to me, it just shows that they that they they have belief in my ability to put on a show and to come and give give a show that's worthy of a card of this magnitude. Like every single time I've come, my last fight, nah, I'm not even finna go into all of that. I'm not even finna do all of that. I don't need to, my, my, uh, my resume speaks for itself. Anybody that, that, that has gone and that has watched my fights, go back and watch my fights. You already know what you're getting whenever I step in there. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity from, uh, from Hunter and Dana to, to give me this spot, to show my talents, to give me this, on this big of a stage, and um, you already know how I'm going to deliver, bro. I'm give, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to put on a show that's one to remember for the ages, for the magnitude of this card. Because that's just who I am, and that's just how I come whenever it's, whenever it's time for, I mean, for the action, and for you. Know what I mean, for anybody that does, I need a bit, another one of the big questions surrounded has been my health. All he's rushing back, and things like that. No. I'm not rushing back. I've been I've been training. I've been sparring. I've been at a full go now for a few weeks now. 
Um, there's been no setbacks, no, no, nothing hindering anything. And when I'm saying full go, I mean, this is me doing everything full speed, full, uh, full on, like, like I would when I normally train. So there's, there's no concerns. My, my Achilles is not, is not an issue. It's not a, it's not a problem at all. And, um, man, yeah, yeah. I'm just ready to go, man. I'm ready to go. I got my team coming in. We ready to get right on it. We getting right into camp. We're going right into camp mode. And um, Sweet Dreams is back, man. It's time for the team to come back, reclaim his throne, and uh, remind y'all. Because y'all seem to have forgot. I seem to have forgot what happens when I come in there and these things get to work. Can already hear the cracks. Can already hear the the ooze. I miss it. This has been a it's been a long journey, man. From from the time that this injury happened, and I didn't know what to expect. This is an injury that has taken so many, it's taken so much from so many different athletes from time off of their career, from their ability and money, just money, food out of the food out of their family's mouths and things like that. And um, the minute this happened, I jumped in immediately with the best. I found, I went with the best. I got the same doctor Kobe Bryant had, the same doctor Aaron Rodgers had. You know, um, I've been out here with, I relocated, brought myself with, with members of my team out here to Las Vegas to be with the very best in this field in, in my recovery, with my treatment, with everything so I can have everything, all the best resources at my disposal, everything Locked in on making sure that my leg is good, that I'm back and I could be the fighter and the athlete that I am. I'm still him and I'm back. I took some time off. I did it. I did everything right. I've been doing strength and conditioning five days a week, PT, two two day, two, 10 day, 10 times a week, twice a day. It's time. It's time. I put everything into it. It's been a long road. And it um, feels good to be back, man. Feels good to be back. I don't care what anybody say. Can't nothing bring me down. <laughs> Can't nothing bring me down in this moment, man. And uh, yeah, I'll see y'all soon. See y'all soon.